Hi everyone, this is Mindy from Lawn Fawn and in today's video I'm going to be making a friendship shadow box using some of the new products from the December release. Here's a look at some of the products I picked out starting with the mini stamp set So Damn Much. I'm also going to be using the totally awesome stamp set because I wanted some extra cattails and I have the heart garland backdrop in the portrait and then I have the shadow box and the shadow box park add-on. I'm going to start by stamping out my images. So I picked out that set of beavers that are giving each other a hug and then some of those cattails. And I'm stamping this down on some hammer mill cardstock using the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I wanna have a couple more cattails, so I'm going to clean off my stamps with the Lawn Fawn stamp chamois that I keep in my case. I'll reposition them and stamp them again. I'll be using my tri-blend markers to color my images today. These are an alcohol marker and it's three colors in one marker. So I pulled out kind of my little cheat sheet there that I have kind of all swatched out, picked out the colors that I wanted. So I only have a small grouping of markers on my desk that I'll use to color in the images. I'm going to start with my cattails. So I laid down the lightest color, the lightest shade of green in my marker, and then I'm gonna go over it with the darker shades. I just wanna add a shadow area to it. These really don't need a lot of blending because they are pretty small areas to color in. Then I'm gonna come in for the top of the cattail, doing a layer of light brown first, and then adding a line of the dark color to give it that shadow look. Now for the beavers, I want to have their bodies be a light brown and then their tails be a dark brown. And I'm starting off by coloring in one of the beavers, just using the lightest color in this marker set. But I'm going to leave the bellies white for right now. I'm going to shade that a different color later on. So after I laid down that lightest color, I'm coming in with the medium color that's in this same marker, blend that out a little bit, and then fill it in with that lightest color again. So I'm still going to have that real dark shadow area come through with my mid-tone and then blending out to the lightest color. I like using the Hammer Mill cardstock to do my coloring lately because it seems that the ink sits on top of the cardstock just a little bit longer than on Nina, which gives me a little bit more time to blend my colors out. So after I finish that first fever, I'm coming in with the second one. Once again, putting down that lightest color and then going into the darkest shade to add that shadow area and blending out with the rest of the shades. Now here I did leave that belly, kind of that light color again, which I will fill in in just a moment. Once in a while, depending on how much contrast I have, I may go back over it and color it all again. Now I'm moving on to the tails. So I have a darker mix here for this one. Once again, starting out laying down my lightest color first then going over to the darkest shade in this marker and then blending out once again. And I put the shadow area towards the bottom of the tails. Now I'm coming in and just adding that really light color to the bellies. Now, if you have tri-blend markers, here is a quick shot of the markers that I used. You can see I don't have a lot of markers on my desk for this, which is why I love those tri-blends right now. I lined up the coordinating dies, held them down with a low tack tape and ran those through my die cut machine and then I can work on building my shadow box. I'm going to take that largest piece and die cut this twice out of white cardstock. This is what's going to form our shadow box. Then I took the hills and the treetops and die cut them out of sage leaf cardstock. And I'm also going to cut out some trees out of paper bag cardstock. I'm going to take one of the white panels that I die cut out and I'm going to line up this opening in between the edge and the score line. So that creates my window for my shadow box. I want to decorate the inside of my shadow box. So I took a long piece of white cardstock. I put it on my make art station and I'm using the slimline cloudy stencil. I'm starting to ink blend some clouds first with ballet slippers. So a really light pink ink. And then I'm going to come in with chili pepper ink but only get the very, very edge of the cloud just to give it some contrast. Once I did that, I'll remove the stencil, flip it, and I'm gonna add another layer. So I have my cardstock kind of holding down in place with uh, a removable adhesive or a re repositionable tape, and then I'm holding the stencil down with some magnets. 
Once I remove this layer of the stencil, I'm going to go around the outer edges with my blending brush, just using the leftover ink that I have. I'm going to add some more ink blending later on. I'm going to take this panel and trim it down. So really what I did is I measured the inside panels of my shadow box so that I could trim these to that size. Taking those two long pieces of white cardstock that we die cut, there are some score lines that the die created. So I'm going to go through and fold along those score lines and reinforce them with the bone folder. By reinforcing them a little bit more, this is going to help make it fold flat so that it can fit into our envelope. So we have two places on each, on each piece to fold. There is the flap here, that skinny piece. That's where we're going to add our adhesive and then folding it once more to be able to form our box. Now I'm going to take my cloud panels and I'm going to add a little bit of ink to the very bottom. I didn't do this before because I knew I would trim it down. So I'm doing it now just to have it kind of be cohesive throughout all of the panels. Then I'm going to take some white ink, add that to my work surface with a couple drops of water. I'll mix that up with a paintbrush and flick this onto my background. Now I have one more thing I want to add for flicks to the background. So I want to make sure that this ink is dry first so that they don't kind of mix if they're both wet. So I'm just going over that with my heat tool and then I'm taking my chili pepper ink. I smush that down, adding a couple drops of liquid stardust, mix that together and add flicks of this to my background. While these are drying, I'm going to work on adding some ink to my other pieces for my shadow box. So starting with my trees and the hillside, I'm taking rainforest ink and a small blending brush and I'm adding that color just right to the very tippy top of the hills. And then I'm also going to take the tree trap tree tops and go around the entire piece of those. I am doing this on a silicone mat, which is just helping hold my pieces in place because they are smaller and there's kind of less area to hold those down. So I'm going to clean my work surface off here and I'm going to bring in the trees and I'm going to add a little bit of walnut ink to the very outer edges just to try and give them a little bit of dimension so they're not so flat looking. Once I have everything that I wanted to add color to, I can start working on some of the assembly of my box. So I'm going to take those two long white pieces and we have those small flaps at the top. So I open these up. So this is the front and I'm adding a piece of one eighth of an inch double sided tape to each of those small flaps. For right now, we're only going to connect one end. So I'm lining those up right next to each other. I'm going to remove the backing of that double sided tape with my craft pick, line that other piece up right next to it, and then just carefully fold that flap over. So that gives us one long piece. I'm going to decorate the inside of my box, starting with those pieces that we added the clouds to and the flicks of that liquid stardust. So I'm adding some tape runner to the back of that. So this is the main piece that we're going, going to see through the window. And then I also have the two smaller pieces to add to the side. You could also have done this and decorated the whole outside of the box too. Once I have these secured in place, I like to kind of prop my box up on how it's going to start forming. I'm not going to attach anything yet. I just like to kind of bring it together to see how that looks. Now I'm going to start decorating the front of the box and this is all just a lot easier to do before it's completely put together. Now I'm going to add a little bit of tape runner to the tops of my trees, but I'm only going up to that top corner. If you add too much tape, it's going to overhang in that opening and you're going to end up sealing that shut. So I only added to the very outer edge of the treetop and added some of that tape runner to the edge of my tree trunk so that it adheres to the sides and the very top corner. And then I'll just repeat that on the other side of my box. So we have these really cute trees that are going to frame the opening of our window. I had some cardstock overhanging, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim that off. And then I have this other hill. Now one of them has the tabs, or they both have the tabs, but I'm going to trim the tabs off of one of them. I want to add it to the front of the card. So I'm adding tape runner to the very bottom there, and then I can attach my hillside to that. Now we have our second hill. So this is the one that still has the tabs on it. We are going to fold those two tabs over, and then I'm going to be adding once again that one eighth of an inch double sided tape to each side. This is what's going to secure our hill to the inside of the shadow box. Now I'm going to open up my shadow box. I'm going to remove the backing on just one side of that flap 
and I'm going to place this about center of that side panel and just up a little ways. I kind of eyeballed it with the hill that is in the front just so that you can't see the very bottom of that hill that's in the inside but up a little bit so you can definitely see it if that makes sense. So now that I have that in there, I remove the backing of that second flap. I also remove the backing on the flap that is way over here on the left hand side and I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue. Then I can fold my shadow box shut. So I have those flaps folded in and I'm just going to secure these down. I use the liquid glue just so it gave me a little bit of wiggle room in case I needed to adjust that hill in the inside. Now we can finish decorating our shadow box. So I took this heart garland and I die cut it twice from white cardstock just to add stability to it. And then I'm going to add some hearts. So I die cut out the hearts from ballet slippers and pencil eraser cardstock. And I'm going to add these on with my liquid glue and a jewel picker, just kind of going every other with the color across that banner. This is going to go on the front of my shadow box. So I only want to add adhesive to the two ends. You don't want adhesive in the middle because you'll end up gluing your box shut. So I just added it to the very end and had that going across from corner to corner. Now I can add my critters and also my elements for my scene. So I added a little bit of liquid glue just to the very bottom of the beavers and added that to the center of my hillside. And then I have all these cattails and this is really just filler. So some of them I added behind the beavers. I have one in the front and then I have some tucked behind the trees. So kind of giving the illusion that they're near a pond, which I thought was really super cute. Just adding little bits of the liquid glue and helping kind of get in my box using my tweezers. So I'm finishing up building the scene, which I love how that turned out, but I now I need to add my sentiment. So I'm going to take this small banner, which I believe is off of that heart garland backdrop die. And I die cut that banner out of pencil eraser cardstock. I prepped that with my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to ink up a sentiment in embossing ink. This sentiment comes off of the Simply Sentiments stamp set. I just gently press that down and I'm going to ink it up one more time just to make sure I have a really good impression. And this sentiment just barely fits right inside that stitching. I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder and then I'm going to heat set that with my heat tool. I'm going to place this at the bottom of my shadow box and I'm going to pop that up a little bit with some foam squares and add that to the bottom. And so even when this is folded up, there's not a lot of dimension, so it still fits inside the envelope really good. I'm going to put a final finishing touch on this by adding some sparkle glaze to my hearts at the top so it's shiny and sparkly. And then that's going to finish up my shadow box. I really love how this came out. So even though I was using some Valentine products and a lot of pink, I still think this is a great friendship box that you can give to somebody. And I really love these two colors together, that pencil eraser and that sage leaf. I think it's something a little bit different, not your bright pink or purples that you might normally see in Valentine's cards. I hope you enjoyed today's card project. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have an amazing day.